Hello and welcome to a new video of the series Tech Bytes. I'm Arnaldo Velasquez. And in this opportunity, I will show how to create a polymer model in IMAX, the Black Oil Simulator of CNG, using the interface of IMAX and Builder, our preprocessor. Polymers are very large molecules of high molecular weight, constituted by the repeated union of many small units through covalent bonds, and are added to their injection fluid to increase the water viscosity to provide mobility control of the fluids in the reservoir. That EUR technique is called polymer flowing, where the volumetric sweep efficiency is improved, the channeling and the water breakthrough are reduced, all of which increase the oil recovery factor. However, to reach an effective polymer flooding, the mobility ratio that normally called as M needs to be less than 1, since higher M values leads to viscose fingering and thus create conformance problems. Today, I will explain how to create a polymer flooding process, and for that I will be using a previously created IMAX model. So, the first step that I need to do is drag and drop this model into the builder icon. Let's say that it is a submodel that initially contains two phases and is using the black oil fluid model to simulate the historical portion of the production. Let's start with the polymer fluid model. Then we need to go to the component section and select the process wizard. And in the first step of this process wizard, we need to select the polymer injection process. Let's continue to the next step. In the second step, we need to input the specific data for the polymer model. That means that we need to select the effect or phenomena that we want to simulate in our process. Let's say that if we unselect all the effect, we still have the possibility to create our polymer model. But that polymer model will include only the polymer viscosity changes with polymer composition and also with velocity in the next step. However, to show all the effects, I will be including one by one, starting with the polymer viscosity as a function of salinity. Then we need to enter the initial reservoir water salinity that will be equal to 50,000 ppm in this exercise. Then we need to set the water injection salt concentration that in IMAX will be equal to the seawater salinity. And for that, I will be using 35,000 ppm as default value. Also, we have an, an option to do no alter the result of our base case model. Because our base case model has history match, then we need this option activated. Let's continue to the polymer absorption into the rock. When we activate this option, we have the possibility to reduce the residual oil saturation due to polymer absorption. However, because IMEX has the possibility to reduce the residual oil saturation due to polymer viscoelastic behavior, then I will be including this effect instead. Finally, we have the possibility to include the polymer degradation with time, and for that we need to input the polymer half-life. That number will be used to create a frequency factor of a first-order reaction where the polymer is converted to water during time. Let's continue to the next step, where we need to input the specific data for relative permeability interpolation. By default, the process wizard used two relative permeability curves. The first curve for the water oil displacement and the second curve for the polymer displacement at the maximum polymer concentration, maximum absorption, and maximum blockage. Between both curves, the simulator will be interpolating many relative permeability curves depending on an interpolation parameter. Because we select the viscoelastic behavior for, of polymer, then that interpolation parameter will be the polymer composition. In this step, we need to enter the ratio to reduce the residual oil saturation for the second core and also the relative permeability endpoint for the second course. Let's continue to the next step. We need to select the regions where the relative permeability will be interpolated. I am selecting all the regions available in the model. Let's continue to the next step where we can input the polymer viscosity versus composition and also salinity. In this step, we have the possibility to include the velocity effect or shear rate effect on polymer viscosity. I will be using velocity. Then, in the first column, we need to enter the velocity value, and in the rest of the column, we need to enter 
the polymer viscosity depending of the different polymer concentration and also salinity. This is the table for the first value of salinity. For the second value, we need to go to the end of the auction and change that value. IMEX has the possibility to include the mobile water for the velocity calculation. We have the possibility to include that as user. We can change also the axis of the, this plot by going to the end of the auction and change, for example, for velocity. And we can see here the Newtonian behavior of the polymer at lower velocity and non-Newtonian behavior of the polymer at higher velocity. If we change for the salinity variable, we can see the behavior of the polymer viscosity versus salinity. Also, we can change the property of this plot. We can change the scale. And if we want, we can include the accessible report volume in the plot to see what is the real behavior of the polymer inside the reservoir. Let's continue to the next step where we can include the polymer absorption. The process wizard have three rock type that we can select. And the rock density is changing with that selection. However, if our rock density value is different, we can input this value directly. Also, we can input the resistance factor for polymer, accessible pore volume, and the number of point of polymer absorption versus concentration that we want include in our simulation. Let's continue to the next step. This step is the final step where we can include the polymer composition to inject and also the salt concentration. In this step, we can select the injectors and the date where will be applied the polymer injection. Click in Finish button and we can see the conversion of the polymer composition. Click in OK. And finally, we can check how the process wizard converted the data. Initially, we start with the black oil fluid model. Now we can see policy wire. Click with the second button and then go to display data as a first section to see the component section inside the data set. As the field conversion, I can see the fluid model that was changed from black oil to policy water. And if we go down, in the data set, we can see the PVT of the seawater, where the water formation volume factor, compressibility, and viscosity of the seawater is changing with the salinity. I can see the amount of reservoir water and seawater inside or initially in the reservoir. I can see the polymer absorption data versus concentration. I can see the seawater density changing with salinity. The frequency factor of the first order reaction for the polymer degradation, the coefficient of the salinity effects, the viscosity and polymer reference concentration, and finally, the table of the viscosity versus composition and also velocity. We can click on OK, and also if we go to the component section and select model, we can see the seawater density changing with concentration. If we go to the PVT regions, we can see the PVT table here. And if we go to the polymer tab, we can see the variable of absorption versus concentration, viscosity ratio versus concentration. And we can change any value in this tab. Finally, we need to go to the file, save up, and save this with another name, including the polymer. That is the final step that we need to do to create the polymer flooding model in IMEX. Thank you very much for watching this video. And remember to click like if you consider it, and subscribe to our channel and turn on your notification so you are informed about our future technical bytes and publications.